thanks uh, Jaume and the Barcelona GSE for for you know, thinking of me as a as a participant in this uh, um, uh, policy roundtable. Uh, now, after after listening to Roger's uh, presentation, I feel a bit uh, badly because you know he he gave a very well structured, very well organized presentation, and he even came up with a solution to our our problems. And uh, I, mine will be unstructured, uh, be a number of scattered thoughts, <laughs> and certainly I won't come up with a solution, <laughs> even though maybe uh, during the discussion I will I will suggest my own uh, uh, my own uh, you know uh, crazy idea. So uh, <laughs> okay. So first of all, the, the title of the that we were given for this: uh, How much longer until the end of the crisis? Now. The first uh, thing that this uh, title suggests is that we are in a crisis. And, well, that's not obvious. Uh, that's, uh, qu uh, to, to say the least, it's, it's, it's questionable. Um, in a strict sense, if we think of uh, uh, a crisis as a recession, that is a, a period in which there is a decline in the absolute value of economic activity, um, well, most of the world is not in a crisis. Uh, in fact, most, there was a financial crisis that triggered what we now call the Great Recession. Uh, it started in 2008 uh, for most countries. That was a very serious, uh, it implied a very serious decline in output and employment in, in, in many countries. And, but most of them have recovered from that from the recession, strictly speaking. I mean, so take the United States. Uh, the, the dating committee of the NBER picked uh, the second quarter of 2009 as the quarter marking the end of the, of the recession, okay? Now, but we know that uh, in a broad sense, this is not true. Uh, um, in a broad sense, it's not true because we still feel worldwide the legacy or several legacies of the financial crisis uh, of 2008 and 2009. You know? So, uh, and, and these legacies have made the recovery, what was supposed to be a recovery coming after the recession, a peculiar one. Not, it's not the standard recovery, the, one, the kind of recovery that we are used to and that happens invariably after any recession. Of, and we, we have experienced uh, in a, uh, many of those recessions in advanced economies in the post-war period. Okay? So what makes, my, what makes this uh, recovery uh, special? And that's what my, my presentation will, will, will focus on. Well, I would say it has two uh, characteristics that make it special. It's what, um, I guess, the first, uh, it's what we could call a multi-speed recovery, okay? So different uh, countries, different uh, regions are uh, recovering at very different rates. So take, um, uh, the, take the, the most recent forecasts of the IMF for 2013. So uh, the IMF uh, uh, foresees a, a growth rate for the world economy of 3.3%. Now, these high, uh, huge differences. For advanced economies, the forecast is 1.2 percent. For uh, emerging economies and less developed economies, is 5.3 percent. Okay, a huge discrepancy. Uh, to a large extent, emerging economies and less developed economies have not felt much of the of the crisis, even of the financial crisis itself. Uh, most of them, you know, may, may have experienced a, sl a slight decline in GDP and employment that lasted two or, or three quarters at most, but they recovered fast after that. In fact, growth has even come to a region which had not seen it for decades, Sub-Saharan uh, Sub uh, um, Africa. Now, with, so I said uh, the growth rates for 2013 1.2% in advanced economies versus 5.3% uh, in uh, emerging and less developed economies. Now, the 1.2% also masks huge differences, and we know that. On the one hand, we have economies like the US that seems to be, seem to be consolidating their recovery, and on the other hand, we have the euro area for which the, um, 
the IMF forecasts uh, an overall growth rate in 2013 of minus 0.3%. Okay, so the euro area, as you all know, is back in a recession. Okay, so we have experienced what uh, some people refer to as a double dip. Okay, after st having started to recover from the initial crisis uh, um, and starting in, at the, in the end, the third quarter of 2011, GDP in the euro area as a whole uh, has been decreasing. So that's the first uh, characteristic of, of this re recovery if we take this broad worldwide perspective. Okay, different areas are experiencing at very different rates. The second characteristic is that it's extremely fragile. And this comes almost hand in hand with the fact that it, we're talking about a recovery following a crisis that was triggered by a financial crisis that had its origins in a financial crisis. So what do we mean by the recovery being fragile? That, you know, uh, since it started, or since we thought it had started, it has been threatened or interrupted by continuous factors or shocks, okay? So let me mention four um, such uh, shocks or threats or factors that, uh, you know, some people may want to, would want to think are already in the past, but, you know, uh, they may, they are likely to, to give us a, a couple of, uh, of, of, of scares. First, the Euro debt crisis, okay, that uh, of course was being built up over time but uh, got triggered in May 2010 when, with the first uh, assistance program for uh, Greece. Now, the, so when I say the Euro debt crisis, I, I specifically refer to the fact that you know, some euro area countries uh, are perceived as being potentially insolvent, okay? not being able to repay their debt, and hence, as a result of that, uh, requiring very high um, interest rates in order to convince investors to purchase the, their debt. Okay? So this uh, euro debt crisis has had several episodes. It comes, you know, it comes back, it, it goes away, but you know, the last one being Cyprus, as you all know, and, uh, a tiny a tiny island in the Mediterranean that, uh, that uh, you know, has gotten the attention of the, of, of the whole world for, for a, a few months. And the attention, as I will say at the end, is likely to, to return to it soon. The second, uh, uh, the second threat or the second um, factor that has uh, accounted for this fragility of the recovery is uh, the risk or the perceived risk of a breakup of the euro area. Okay, that, that's like a serious event to which it has been, to which has been assigned typically a low probability, but the consequences are so huge and the mess that it would create uh, uh, would be so, so, so big that uh, it's, it, it, it's something that is, has been looming um, over the recovery all this time. The third uh, factor, I would say, the risks of, to the stability of the financial system and in particular of the banking sector Worldwide, but specifically in, 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 in some countries, in particular uh, in the Euro area, uh, in the US at the, at the beginning of the crisis, not so much now. Um, so this is a third factor that accounts for this uh, slow uh, recovery with all the, all the issues that it associated with it, you know, that have to do with the, the new regulation, uh, the deliver, the forced the leveraging by banks in order to meet higher capital ratios in order to, to, to absorb the losses incurred during the crisis and so on. And because of that, a very low rate of credit expansion, which has you know, uh, um, slowed down uh, the recovery. The fourth uh, factor uh, is the large uh, requirements in terms of fiscal consolidation for many countries. The, the, the strength of the recession generated by the financial crisis led to huge um, public financial finance imbalances in public finances, large deficits, very rapid accumulation of debt in debt of debt in many countries, and the need for governments to to you know at least to 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 stop this uh, acceleration of debt, and that requires closing deficits at a time when, for many countries the economy has not uh, even started to, to, to recover. Okay. The consequences of that fiscal consolidation, especially if it has to be undertaken by a large country like the United States, 
is also a threat that has been looming over, over the recovery. Now, all these factors that I mentioned, these four factors, have impacted different, uh, different countries and different regions in different ways, and that's natural. But I think the, the most amazing contrast, which I th it's, it's uh, almost uh, uh, it gives a good picture of, of, of this multi-speed or these divergences that we observe in terms of the recovery, takes place as far, uh, in my opinion, between the euro area and the US. And this picture you know, just focuses on a single variable, but it tells, uh, uh, it, 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 it tells uh, well what's, what's going on. So what you see here is the, the unemployment rate since 2003 in the euro area, in blue, and in red in the US. Okay, so you see how the unemployment rate starting in 2007, 2008, um, earlier in the US than in the euro area, it started to go up. It went up more in the US than in the euro area. And uh, after, you know, around mid-2009, Interestingly, the two unemployment rates converge. We had not seen this in a long time, okay, that the unemployment rate in the US was as high as the unemployment rate in the euro area. And that's, when, that's about the time when everyone hoped that the recovery would, uh, would start. Uh, as I said earlier, the recession was, the end of the recession was announced for the US, and the unemployment rate in the US has been recovering. So it's been going down since then, and the recession even though the pace, as uh, we saw in, in, in Rogers, some of Roger's figures, the pace of recovery has been slow, I would say it has been relatively steady, okay, as you can see in the picture. But things were very different, have been very different in the euro area, and as you can see after, you know, a period of some hesitation uh, between 2009 and 2010, uh, the unemployment rate starts going back. Again, the euro area enters a second uh, recession. Now, what's behind, what, what are behind these uh, differences? Well, it's, there are many factors, and some of them are related to, the, to the, the, the ones I mentioned earlier. But look at, uh, um, at, at, at some of, of, of the factors that, that m more directly account for that. So here you have the growth rate of credit to non-financial firms and households in the US, in the euro area, and in particular in two specific countries of the euro area. So you can see that starting in 2010, credit, or actually in 2011, start showing positive growth in the US, okay? And now it's growing at a, slight, at a relatively low rate, but it's growing, okay? Banks are extending new loans to, to businesses and to households. Um, what's happening in the euro area, credit, the growth, credit growth is still in negative numbers, okay? In the case of Spain, it's a, an extreme case in which, you know, the growth rate is very negative, okay? So obviously that accounts partly for the differences in the recovery. Um, look at another um, uh, variable that I think is very telling. It's the, the ratio of indebtedness of households, okay? Um, so as we all know, in, during the 2000s, uh, this ratio increased a lot in many countries, including the US and the euro area as a whole, and within the euro area specifically in some countries like uh, Spain, Ireland, and, and others. But you can see that uh, as of uh, 2008, when the crisis uh, uh, was hitting uh, hard, um, uh, the US and the euro area, that ratio made, made a, a, a turnaround a very you know, solid turnaround in the US and started to decrease and it has gone down a lot. In the euro, euro area, it has not accelerated, it has kind of stabilized, but we still have to see a, de a decline. Okay, so this deleveraging that is certainly needed is one factor that, um, and that still has to take place in the, in the, in the euro area is a factor that uh, is likely to delay the recovery even further in the euro area relative to, to the US. And this is not unrelated to developments in housing prices. You know, after all, housing is likely to, to get most of the blame for the, fi the, the financial crisis uh, uh, to begin with, and obviously and how the, the, the housing boom was fu funded and so on. But you can see how housing prices um, have adjusted in the US 
back to the levels uh, that, in real terms, that, that we observed in the early 2000s. The adjustment in the euro area is taking much longer. Okay. Um, so these are these are um, you know three specific specific factors that may affect those differences. Now, I, I have spoken about threats uh, that many people view as being largely in the past. Certainly, political leaders want us to believe that. But let me mention two that are rem that are remaining and that are likely to draw. Um, our attention in the next few months and years. The one, uh, the first one is one that, that Roger uh, mentioned um, indirectly, which is how to manage the transition to normal interest rates. Now, interest rates worldwide are extremely low. They cannot be sustained at these levels forever. They have to return to levels closer to 5%, 4.5%. I'm talking about policy rates, which are now at zero levels or uh, very close to zero levels in most of uh, uh, in most advanced economies. So, uh, how the transition is uh, carried out may have an impact on the consolidation of the recovery or not. For instance, if it's not done gradually, it may lead to a spike in long-term interest rates. That that can happen very fast, and we can see that in the next few. We've seen some of that already. Interest rates have gone. Long-term interest rates in the U.S. have gone up by by um, one percent in one month, one percentage point. That's a lot. Uh, that could uh, that could uh, slow down the the recovery. Okay. So how to? You no, know, the the Federal Reserve should be very careful in managing that transition. It is likely to create a lot of turbulence in stock markets and currency markets. It has already cr started to create such a turbulence, and it will. Um, and it may have, as a byproduct, it may generate a, a potentially uh, explosive situation in emerging economies. To some extent, the, in the, the low interest rates in, in advanced economies have led to massive capital flows to emerging economies. Now, if interest rates are start going to start going up in, 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 in advanced economies, those capital flows may come to an end, and may come to an end very suddenly. That's what we call a sudden stops. Okay? So that may cause all kinds of problems in a part of the world which was working. Okay? So again, these are very serious threats to, these are very serious threats to, to the recovery. And the second threat I wanted to mention, it's a persistent one, but it's one that sooner or later we'll have to face, and it's specific to the euro area. And, 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 this, and this is a very serious one, uh, which is the fact that divergences within within the euro area across countries seem to be um, a fact of life. And those divergences, so contrary to our hopes or the hopes of, of many, the, you know, having a, a common currency have, has not at all uh, reduced those divergences in terms of the cyclical performance. Now, if those divergences persist and if they increase, and they, they increase to a point where the good performance of some economies really generate serious inflationary pressures for the euro area as a whole, that will force the ECB to raise interest rates at a time when some economies are still in a recession. That would be something unprecedented, no, and it is likely to create very uh, strong political tensions, and you know, I don't even want to, 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 to think what the consequences may be. So just to conclude, um, uh, so the question, the original question was when will this all come to an end or how much longer until the end of the crisis? As usual, uh, we don't know, I don't know. Uh, I think uncertainty, uncertainty will prevail. We'll have a lot of uncertainty in the, in the next few months and, and years. This is a legacy of a financial crisis, a legacy of having experienced a recession that had, had its origins in a financial crisis. So that the most important thing for us to do and for, and for policymakers, is to prevent uh, the next financial crisis. And um, there is a risk that if the recovery consolidates, uh, we or they uh, relax um, in you know, changing our institutions in a way that prevents uh, the next financial crisis from happening within our lifetime. Thank you.